Thanks, Robin. Um, please do get involved. There's lots of ways to get plugged in, a lot of different things you can do. Please take advantage of that. I will also plug, I didn't, I didn't have anyone come up to speak about this, but there's also a dad's club uh, specifically to engage with dads and uh, their, their students. So there'll be some things that come, all, come out about that. They, they, I would say that they shoot for uh, quality over quantity. There's not as many dad's clubs uh, Dad cl dad's Club events, um, but they really try to have some good ones, and I encourage you to participate uh, when you hear about those. So I know that uh, some of your students are freshmen, and they are at Camp Mustang this week. A couple of you were asking me how they were doing. Um, I talked with Laura Vitas, who is our new Dean of Students, um, a little bit earlier today, and I know that yesterday they had some lightning, so they had to stay indoors, and then they had some rain, so they had to stay indoors. And I know they're really trying to get outside the walls uh, last night, and the weather today looked beautiful. And I'm actually, uh, Laura could not be here with us. I, I will say, I think she's trying to get to the grade level meetings, uh, some of the first luncheons, so that folks, because several folks have asked, uh, wanted to meet her. And so I want to give you guys a chance to meet her. But I'm just going to show a quick video that she sent me from Camp Mustang today, so you can uh, at least get a glimpse of the weather um, and see who hey she is. Hey parents, my name is Laura Vitas. I am the Dean of Students here at Houston Christian. I am shooting this video to say hello at beautiful Carolina Creek. We are out here for Camp Mustang with our freshmen and junior and senior counselors having a blast. We are here at the lake with some kids doing some cliff jumping and swimming. I am really looking forward to joining the HC family this year. It'll be my first year at Houston Christian. I'm looking forward to getting to know your kids and getting to know you all as families. If there is ever anything that I can do to support your kid at HC, please don't hesitate to reach out, and I hope to meet you all in person so soon. Thanks. All right, so that's Dean Vitas. Um, I, I hope that you have a chance to meet her and get to know her uh, as the year progresses. So um, those are some important people to know, and I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, I want to get jump on to the, some things we want to do tonight and some of you we did not have the principal preview last year and the reason for that was it was a crazy year and the crazy start to school and sometimes things can be should be rescheduled and sometimes you just need to cancel things and we just canceled last year and and didn't do it um, but this is I think the fifth one I've done um, we started doing this several years ago and there's really three reasons why we do it First of all, uh, I think it really helps. What I found is often parents did not know kind of what we were doing. They didn't know what we were working on year to year. There's things that we work on often internally, and but those things aren't maybe big and flashy, but parents often want to know. And so I think it just really helps with transparency to communicate with you all what we are doing and what we're working on in a given year. Um, the second thing is equipping parents for a partnership, and I think it's really helpful if you know what we're doing, then you know how to come alongside us, you know how to come alongside your student, and it helps you be a part of what we're doing, and so that's, that's one of the goals tonight. When you hear and see what we're working on and where, we, where we've come, um, I think it's really helpful for you to see where you can be involved and where you can help us continue to move forward. And, and the last one is accountability. I think often some folks uh, see that as a negative word. I think it's really positive. I think it's really helpful to have accountability. And when I tell you that we're working on something, you can hold me accountable to it. <laughs> Are we making progress? And by doing this year to year, obviously with the exception of last year, um, I'm able to report back and, and tell you the progress that we're doing. And I think we're doing some great things with students. I'm super happy with it, and I like to be able to share that. And so this gives me an opportunity to do that, so I want to do that tonight. Uh, but that's, that's why we do uh, the, what we have tonight. I, as I look each year, like this year, I looked at what, we ha what I wanted to cover, and at first I was kind of like, ah, uh, I don't have like that much, and then I started making a list, and I realized I probably have way more um, than what we have time for, so I'm going to try to have the right balance of keeping you interested um, and giving you sort of a summary, but there may be some things, and you say, I want to know more, um, feel free to follow up with me. I would be happy uh, to talk with you more about any of these topics. So for tonight, this is uh, what we're going to, kind of the agenda, if you will. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to talk a little bit about COVID. I think that's on everybody's mind. It, it it's hard to get away from it, so I want to speak to a few things related to that. Uh, we'll talk about some academic achievement and some things that are happening in that area. Uh, we will move on to our ISAS accreditation, and I'll explain what that is and how that impacts us in the coming weeks. And I also want to talk a little bit about professional development, some things we're doing with teachers. 
Um, that should interest you. If it doesn't, um, it's really important because what we spend a lot of time working with our teachers on things, and hopefully that's uh, meaningful to you because it does impact your kids. Um, I want to talk about you as parents, how you partner with us, um, and lastly, just some things we're doing in extracurricular areas. So that's the plan tonight. We'll see how I do. I'll, I've been pretty efficient in the past. We'll see if I can keep that keep that streak going. Sound okay? Great. I'm going to do that anyway, so thanks for working with me. I appreciate it. It's what I planned for, so you're kind of stuck with it. All right, first, COVID, uh, past, present, future, um, kind of where we've, where we've been. So I think sometimes I mention COVID, people's blood pressure automatically spikes a little bit. Um, it's hard to escape it, but it, it is the reality that we live in, right? Last year, we were thrilled to be able to have students on campus. We were able to run a lot of things. We had athletic seasons. Um, we weren't able to do everything we wanted to do, but overall, we had a really successful year. And um, that was... That was great. We basically wanted to do whatever we had to do. If that involved masking every day and, and doing some of those things, that's what we did. That's what we required of students. And we wanted to do whatever it took to get students on campus because we did not want to do classes online. And overall, that was we were pretty successful with that. Um, I will say I know there's a lot of different opinions on, in terms of how COVID should be handled. I fully acknowledge that. And um, I know that you know, we, there's different schools handling things differently and probably given a room this size, some, some folks agree with how we've handled things, some people don't, and that's okay. Um, we do the best we can and really want to act in our students' best interests. So one of the things that in, in looking at last year we observed is some schools had anywhere from 12, in, in our region I saw schools anywhere from 12 to 20 percent of their students were online. Um, we didn't have that at all. We had around 5 percent. Uh, give or take a little bit on a given time of year that took advantage of our distance learning. We had students that took advantage of that when they were out for quarantine or out for a couple week period. Um, and I think overall that worked pretty effectively in most situations. Um, obviously having students distance is not as good as having them in the classroom. We recognize that. We've made the decision that we're not going to continue offering that same level of option for students this year. Um, we will be working with students that are out for a period of time. For example, if a student is quarantined or sick, we're obviously going to work with them, but it's going to be on a more individual basis with the teacher as opposed to a more uh, uniform system, if you will, and we're not necessarily going to be bringing them live into the classroom in the same way. There may be some situations where that takes place, but um, what we're seeing is it tends to be a, a shorter amount of time. Originally, it was 14 days, and in many cases, it's 10 now, and a 10-day span is really a week of school and, and a week, couple weekends, and it's not the same span of, uh, that students are out. So um, we're really looking at trying to work that more effectively that will benefit every student, uh, both those in the class and those that, that do have to be home for some reason. We're very, I talked to students very much about this on Monday on the first day of school, but we are, our students, we, we are blessed being a high school only. Um, our students are old enough, largely families can make their choices about a vaccine and whether or not they want to go that route. Um, and in doing that, we also, um, students can make a choice on and need to be learning to make some choices. And one of the things that we talked about specifically on Monday is that um, masks are optional. We're not requiring that this year. And that's something we did require last year. And in that, um, that sometimes takes courage. And, and we talked, our theme this year, which I'll talk about in a minute, is honor. And one of the things I talked about with students was for them to honor their parents. And if they made, if they and their parents made the decision they needed to wear a mask, please wear a mask. And we were going to honor them and respect that. Um, I would say that, you know, that's not necessarily a majority of our students that are masking up at this point, but um, it is... Uh, it is something that we're gonna respect and we allow students to do, encourage students to do if they want to. Um, we're also trying to take some steps to, like for example, we on the first day of school, if we put all the students in here, it's pretty full in here. We chose to do that in the gym so we could spread students out more. We're trying to be reasonable in what we do and, and thoughtful. And we also, uh, where we had grade levels meet was a little bigger locations. We are very intentional about that on the first day and for this week. So we're, we're continuing to monitor. This is a situation where you kinda, kind of feel like oh we're we're through it and then the delta variant goes crazy and like right here in august and it's kind of nuts and so we're just continuing to monitor the situation monitor it with our students um, i will say looking at the data from last year we did not have issues with students spreading covid person to person in the classroom and actually really on campus there was a couple occasions but overall 
by and large, the issues that we ran into with spread came from what students were doing off campus. And that is the number one thing I would encourage you as parents to do is monitoring your students and their activities, um, whether it's in the evenings or on the weekend, sleepovers, um, get togethers, whatever. Um, those are the situations where we saw consistently where students were together and there was, um, there was spread. So really encourage you to be thoughtful about that and have those conversations with your students. Um, one of the other ways COVID impacted us was one of the things we try to offer some parent education opportunities, and we were not really able to do that very much last year. Um, matter of fact, I don't think we offered any last year um, due to the situation. So we're, we're looking forward to being able to do that. We're not planning anything right now. We're kind of going to wait and see how this goes in the next few weeks, but we'd really like to get back where we're offering some more parent education opportunities um, coming up. So I hope you'll keep an eye out for that, and I hope you'll be able to take advantage of that when that takes when that happens. All right, that's COVID. Uh, I know that there's a lot of opinions on that. Um, but I'm going to keep going because that's definitely not the highlight that I want to speak about today. Um, but hopefully that's a little bit helpful to you in terms of our decision making and, and what we're trying to do with put the onus on students. All right, academic achievement. This is one of my favorite topics. Are you right? Sorry, can I go on? Is that okay? You good? All right, perfect. Um, Academic achievement is one of my one of my favorite topics. Uh, we've worked really hard. Something I've reported on in this in the past. We've added a number of I think it's about ten electives over the last several years for our students. We've adjusted our graduation requirements so students have more choice. Um, we're really happy to see the dividends of that and see our students really being able um, to take advantage of what we've offered. Something that you will note this year is we do not have pre AP courses. Um, that is very common with a lot of schools. Uh, not every school, but a lot of schools. Uh, we have changed our pre-AP course name to Honors. That is pretty much a name change, not a curriculum change. Honors courses are still going to be preparing students for AP, but the way uh, College Board has changed some things, a number of schools are going away from the name pre-AP because you pay a whole lot of money for not a lot of benefits. So we've made that choice strategically. It also gives us more flexibility to actually do what's best for our students instead of being locked into certain college board curriculum. And so that's, the, that's part of that decision as well. Um, so we've worked really hard the last three and four years to really look at our honor, what is now our honors curriculum, particularly that nine and 10 level, to make sure we're building skills for students as they get to the junior and senior AP levels. And so, with that in mind, I'm going to put up uh, the AP scores for the last few years, um, starting with last year at the top. Uh, this is overall pass rate. This is not the only thing that should be looked at when it comes to academic achievement, but I think it does give a, a visual of how we're doing. So la this past year, we were at 86% pass rate. Um, the year before, I think you have to put an asterisk by it because uh, due to COVID, AP actually changed some of their tests a little bit. Um, at the end of year and they did some so I, I don't know whether it's good bad or indifferent um, I'm a little cautious on how we interpret last year's data but then if you go back to 18 19 we're at 88 percent pass rate 17 18 you see 84 percent and then in 16 17 you see 80 percent so you see a hopefully a, a pretty steady if I were to go back a little bit further you'd see 80 percent 80 percent we were right around 80 percent and now we're solidly in the mid to upper 80s in terms of how our students are performing so uh, that's not a result of taking kids and saying you can't take AP. That's what some schools do. I don't believe in that. That's not philosophically what we want to do. We want to give kids opportunity. We do steer some kids out. There are some, there's, sometimes students want to take five APs. That's not always a good idea, and we may steer them out of that. Um, sometimes a student wants to take an AP that it really they're not going to be successful. So we do have those conversations, but overall, we want students to be able to try, and um, I, I think that you know, it, it's representative of that. We have some students who were questionable that have passed exams. We have students that were questionable that didn't pass exams. Overall, I'm really happy with this. It's been consistent. And I think that it, we also, we accept a wide diversity of students um, in terms of their academic ability and their scores on the IC. Some schools don't accept the diversity that we do. Um, by mission, we accept a wide diversity of students into our school. And to see this kind of return on our AP scores, I'm really happy to see that because it shows that we're teaching and really instructing students well. This is, uh, I would argue that mid to upper 80s is on par with any school in the city um, in terms of their AP uh, pass rate. So um, that's a really good thing for us. 
There's some other things, but I think that's, a, that's an easy way to quantify some of our academic achievement. I believe this is representative of our instruction across all our classes. It's something we've really focused on, uh, making sure that the instruction that our students are getting on a daily basis, whether it's an AP course, a honors course, or just your elective course, that it's a meaningful uh, course for them and prepares them for the future. So going along with this, uh, we are walking into an ISAS accreditation. And for, so for those of you that are unfamiliar with ISAS or new to Houston Christian, ISAS is the Independent School Association of the Southwest. And that, that is like our regional independent school accrediting body. And for those of you unfamiliar with accreditation, accreditation means that our transcript is valuable and that a college is gonna take it. And that's, this is a pretty rigorous accrediting body. Um, it's probably one of the, it's on par with the best in the country, best in the nation. Um, every 10 years, we have to do a, basically a renewal of that accreditation, if you will. And we do have five year checkup. So we were due actually last year to do our 10 year renewal. Um, that didn't happen because of COVID, so it got pushed back to this year. So they are coming at the end of September and there will be 16, I think it's 16 people that will be coming um, September 26th to 29th. And they will basically go into our classrooms. They will go into our athletics and our athletic facilities. They will watch practices. They will watch classes take place. They will look at our curriculum. They will look at our finances. They will talk to trustees. They will talk to parents. They will talk to students. They'll talk to teachers and they're gonna look at everything. And we have this really cool book, which is about 130 pages. It's called our self-study. And this is, we've had committees meeting for really two years uh, to review different aspects of the school. And we've written basically a, a report, if you will, which I've read every word of a couple times. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend it necessarily. It's good nighttime reading perhaps, but it tells you about every different aspect of the school. And so we're excited to have these folks come. The whole idea of this, it's not like a got you sort of thing. It, the whole idea is to help us get better as a school. It's to help us improve. School improvement is the driver behind it. So we've identified some things that we see and they will basically come and say, do we see the same things or do we see different things? Or maybe, hey, here's some ideas that might make, help make you better. So we're excited about that to happen. Um, that's a pretty big event in the life of our school and pretty significant. Um, so I'm sure you'll see more about that in the coming weeks. We're pretty focused right now in terms of preparing our teachers and preparing everything for that visit. I spent about an hour on a Zoom call today with some ISAS people getting everything lined up for the schedule. So just know that during that time frame, we'll have visitors on campus. Um, that's a great time to tell if you happen to be on campus and talk to one of them. It's a great time to tell a great story about your student and make us look good. That's fantastic. Um, please be honest, don't lie to them though. Okay, all right. So moving on from accreditation, um, one, of the, one aspect that definitely is in this report is about the professional development that we do um, for teachers. So professional development is what we do, how do we improve our teachers, how do we improve what's going on in the classroom? And I work really hard that whenever we do professional development that it does directly tie back to impact students. And so by professional development, the ways that happen, for example, uh, in past years, we didn't do this last year, but other than last year, we've been doing book studies. We've had a book study where a department will meet every month to discuss it. It's usually something related to something that, that's going on in the classroom. Um, so we, we do that. We also have monthly faculty meetings, usually a, about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour of every faculty meeting is about being a better teacher and how are we more effective with our students. So those are just some examples. We have some professional development days. For those of you that have been here, um, the SPC tournament. We have a Friday where students go play sports. We tend to uh, have a professional development day here um, while, the student, while the students are off at athletics on that Friday. So in terms of professional development, we really want teachers to help grow in their content knowledge, stay current on trends and new information, and develop instructional strategies. Um, this is, these are all things that I believe you as a parent should care about and should be important to you, so I, I bring that up. I, I think the rise in AP scores are a direct result of the work that we've done for in professional development for teachers. So there's a couple areas that we're focused on this year, have been focused on, they're a continuation. Um, the first one is looking at who we are as a Christian school 
And what does it mean to be a Christian educator? And I think that's very much about culture building. What is the culture that we want to be here and what makes us distinct? For I recognize that probably some in the room um, are here because we are a Christian school. I also recognize that there are probably some in the room that like certain aspects of our culture and like certain aspects that we teach. But you may not be here because we're a Christian school, and that's okay. But we have a unique mission as a Christian school, and we want to make sure that we are living that out authentically and we are doing that in a really excellent way. So to give you an idea of what we talked about, uh, this is something that I talk about with teachers, and, I, and we talked about what it means to be a Christian teacher. And so, for example, we know that some of us as teachers and educators, we spend more time with your student probably than you do during the week, Monday to Friday. And so that's a tremendous influence, and I would argue a tremendous opportunity for us. And you know, we talk about curriculum, and some of you, you're here because of the content of what we teach. And it's one thing to, to what I say, but it's a whole nother layer of how I say it and how I live it out. And so I'll give you an example of this. If I'm trying to teach your student about health, and I sit there with my Milky Way and Doritos and have my snack every day, but I'm telling you, you should have healthy habits, is that going to take with a student? Probably not. But if I live out what I'm teaching, that has a whole different impact. So we want to make sure that we're consistent across in terms of how we live our lives, how our teachers live our lives and speak into our students' lives. That's something that's been very important uh, that we've talked about. And in that, we want them to have a knowledge of scripture and knowledge of the Bible. We want them to be involved in church and Christian community. And we also want them to have a, be developing a Christian worldview and have a theological foundation. I believe we're all developing our worldview to some extent. Um, hopefully as adults, we're well along on that path, but I hope that we're also moving forward. Um, even I know I'm, I'm challenged sometimes in different conversations and I hope you are as well. And so we wanna make sure that we're coming at different topics that we teach in the classroom from a Christian worldview and living that out as a Christian school. So that's something that we're talking through. We're looking at some relevant topics today and saying how do we do this in the most effective way. Um, and I think this has been really good for us as a community, as a community of faculty. Um, we've had some really good conversations. So we started this last spring. We're continuing it through this fall and that will remain our focus at least through Christmas, probably through January most likely. So that's a pretty big topic. In the spring, we're going to be transitioning um, to leadership and focusing more on leadership. Um, leadership is obviously a big part of what we do here at Houston Christian. We want to integrate that into all aspects of our curriculum. Um, and so to give you uh, a sense of, of that, if you look out this building to my left, um, you have the beautiful Bush Center. And in the Bush Center, there's sort of a couple components to it, if you will. Um, the, the George H.W and Barbara Bush Center for Scholars and Leaders. Um, there's a scholarship part. We have what we call the Distinguished Scholars Program, um, which is a, a unique program that pushes students and stretches them in their research skills and their writing skills. And so the DSP program is, is there. Um, we also have the leadership program where we have leadership electives. Um, it also expands. Every student gets touched by that leadership program because as freshmen, they all take a leadership course and um, that continues into every course that they take. They have leadership lessons. So one of the things that we constantly want to do, we're at a point now where we need to st step back. We want to review the curriculum. We want to review where we are, um, make sure that we're doing best practices, all the current research. And we also want to be a little more intentional in the leadership lessons. Those have largely been left up to each teacher. And so we're going to be working in the spring to really make sure that is more intentional and coordinated at each grade level to make sure it has a bigger impact. And so that's all based on research-based best practices. And so that's where we are in terms of just relooking at some of the things that we're doing and how to do it a little bit better. We're also gonna be preparing, this is probably more next year than in the spring, but we're also gonna be looking at how we add a third leg to that. And that is the, the idea of innovation. Um, this is something that's big in Houston. This is something that we want to incorporate in our curriculum. We want all of our students to encounter this. Um, and what it looks like. And so we want to add this to what we're doing in the Bush Center and have this incorporated into the leadership components that we are teaching students. So we're excited about what's ahead. We have a lot of th work to do and a lot of things to develop there, but um, those, those are some things that we're working on that I think are really exciting and you will probably hear more about and reference to. I hope your students will encounter 
um, as we progress forward. Okay, so that's professional development. Academic achievement, ISAS accreditation, professional development. Now let's get a little more personal and talk about you and partnership. Are you with me? You okay? All right. Am I going too slow? You want me to go faster or am I going too fast? Just right. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I love the affirmation. That's really helpful. All right, parent partnership. Um, this is an area I, I, want you to, I want you to stick with me on. I, have a, I want you to hear me on this. So on Monday, when students came on campus, this is something that I talk to them about every single year. There's a couple things I talk to them about. One of the things is our core values, HCHS, Houston Christian High School, Honor Community Heritage and Scholarship. Those are our four core values. If you don't know that, uh, it's in the handbook. It's a lot of places. If you're new and you're just encountering that, welcome. Our four core values are honor, <laughs> community, uh, heritage, and scholarship. So that's a big part. And so what we do is we have one of those that is sort of one or two that we usually focus on more than others in a given year. So in the last two years, really, we've talked a lot about community. And part of community last year was doing things that, you know, are, are best for the whole, best for the community. Even though I may not like wearing a mask all day, I'm going to do what's good for the community and do what we need to do so we can be here. So we talked about that aspect of loving each other in that way. This year, our theme is honor, and we're going to be focused on that. Um, one of the things that we've talked about in relation to community in the past that I think is relevant uh, to and continues to be relevant this year is this idea of belonging versus fitting in. So often for teenagers, they want to fit in. And what that means is they change who they are to be in a certain setting. But when you belong somewhere, you can be who you actually are. And you don't have to put on a, a face, you don't have to put on a front, but you can be your authentic self. And we want to create a community, and I will tell you this is challenging with teenagers because they are very driven by what other people think, but we are trying to develop a community where people belong and feel like they belong in who they really are, and they don't have to put these different faces on. So that's something we've been talking about, and we're going to continue talking about this idea of belonging, and I think it's really, really important and really helps us as we think about this idea of community, and I think it ties neatly with honor. On Monday, I talked to students specifically, and I said, um, I shared this verse from Romans 12, 10. It says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And we talked about, you know, how with honor, we choose to honor someone. It's a choice. We don't have to do it. And we have the opportunity uh, this year as a community to choose to honor their classmates. And so this, this is hard. Um, it's, it's very easy, I think, for teenagers to, to be in their world that revolves around them. Um, and it's hard for them to think of others. And that's something we want to challenge them to do is really consider others and how they can serve others. That's what Christ calls us to. And so we want to, we want to challenge them to do that. Okay, so that's a little bit about this week. And you say, well, Dr. Price, that's great and all, but so we, you talk about this week and you talk about core values, but how does this actually relate to a parent partnership? Well, let me answer that question for you um, since you asked. There's, there's a couple things. Uh, one is I want you to know what we're talking about with students because you can then have conversations at home. Um, your student, I'm gonna say that most of your students will not volunteer a lot. Probably not a single one of your students came home and said, Dr. Price talked about the core values today, or Dr. Price talked about honor. My guess is you have to figure out the right questions to ask if you would like any, inf any information. So if I can somehow give you information that can help give you the right questions to maybe engage in some conversation, then that's a win for me. And so I want to make sure I do that. I, often when I send out an email, you might see that at the bottom of the email, I will put, um, here are some questions that you could ask your, your, your student. I do that on purpose because I think it's, it's equipping you as parents and helps you engage in a conversation that they're not going to really volunteer in. So I want you to know what we're doing, I, some questions that you might ask. Um, how are they treating others? Are they looking for a person sitting by themselves? Uh, one example I gave on Monday was, I, rem I remember distinctly, I think it was two or three years ago, uh, on the first day of school, there was a student sitting by themselves at lunch. I think, I think it was a freshman. I don't remember for sure, but I think it was a freshman. And two, two senior guys went over and sat down with that student. Then nobody asked them to do it. They just did it on their own. How... <laughs> How amazing, I didn't know that, but how amazing is that? 
that they went and did that. And I, I would venture to say that changed that student's day. And, you know, they didn't have to be best friends. They just thought of somebody besides themselves for a few minutes. And I think that's powerful. And I want our students, I shared that story actually with our students because it impacted me. I still remember it. I remember those two. I don't, I don't remember the student they sat with, but I remember the two seniors that did that because it impacted me that they would go take that initiative on their own. Um, and so I think that that's, that's awesome. And I want to share that kind of story with you. And I hope that that will encourage you to have that conversation with your student so they can be that person looking for that, that opportunity. Second, um, second thing related to parent partnership, um, we haven't had as many opportunities as I'd like to do some parent education, but that's something I mentioned earlier. We really want uh, to do that, and we're going to be looking for that. Um, so please stay tuned for opportunities that we present. Um, we'll try to have a few opportunities, if not before the spring, at least in the spring. Third thing I want to mention in relation to parent partnership, uh, this is where I might get myself in a little more trouble. I might make you a little bit more uncomfortable, and I'm okay with that um, because I think it needs to be said, and I'd rather say it now than when it, we're in a situation. So we're not in a situation. I'm not talking about anybody here. But um, so often, I'm a parent. I have three kids. So often when our kids are in trouble, we want to jump in and save them from whatever the trouble is, right? They skin their knee. We want to fix it. We want to make it better. Um, and... So often that, that is our auto reaction as parents. I'm a school administrator. I don't have a classroom. I don't get to teach a class anymore. This campus is really my classroom. I interact with students between classes. I interact with students at lunch. Um, I have a lot of opportunity to get to know students, but it's rarely in the classroom. It's usually outside of the classroom, and I love that. But my class is really um, about developing character. My class is talking with students um, having conversations, what are their interests, what do they want to do, hey, you know, so what are you doing to get you where you want to go, and even to the extent of, in some cases, it's when they've made a decision, talking them through whether that was a good decision or not, and having some conversations. If I believe very much that my role is important to developing character in students, I think about things where I have grown in my life, and usually it has involved some bumps and bruises. If we always jump in and save our student from whatever it is, how are they going to grow? And I would, I would encourage you that we need to sometimes step back and we need to let them get some bumps and bruises. And I hope, I would much rather my child get bumps and bruises in place, in a place where I know people love them, care about them, and want what's best for them, than to wait till I have a daughter who's a senior. I want her to learn some things now before she goes off to college because I don't know if there's anybody in college who's going to care about her the way I know some of her teachers care about her right here. So I would encourage you just to remember that perspective. Um, I will also add, so I, I'll speak to myself. I'll tell on my kids. They're not here. They're at Camp Mustang, so it's okay. I can. Um, I don't know if your kids ever distort what you say. Does that ever happen to you? I remember my, 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 I won't say which daughter, I have two daughters. Uh, one of my daughters, she came down and said, are you saying this? And I think I said something, I, I don't remember exactly. I think it was something about um, her dress or something, not perhaps being long enough and not being appropriate or something. It was something along those lines. And she said something about, uh, it, it, you're saying that I'm not good at fashion or something. I'm like, no, that's not what I said at all. And so then we have a conversation. What did I say? Exactly what did I say? Well, you said that. But, no, what did I say and what did I mean by that? Let's walk it back. Have you ever had those conversations with your kids? Just, maybe it's just me. Okay. So here's the thing. Sometimes kids go home and they say, well, the teacher said, if you're like, I can't believe a teacher would say that you should probably ask yourself and think about some of the conversations you've had with your kids, and maybe the teacher didn't say that. And I would encourage you to give that teacher a call and maybe ask them, what did you say? Because my kid said you said this, and this didn't make any sense to me. And it's so interesting because more often than not, um, that's true. So there's a teacher, teacher saying um, that is if, uh, let me, actually, let me read it to make sure I get it right because I don't want to mess it up. There's a teacher saying, 
It says, um, if you don't believe everything your student says about me, then I won't believe everything they say about you as their parents. Because they do the same thing to us here at school on campus that they do when they come home, okay? So um, just know they're teenagers, and some of it uh, is um, brain development, okay? The brain doesn't fully develop till they're about 25. There is hope. There is hope. And yes, the guys are a little slower than the girls, and it's okay. That's research-based. Um, there, but there is hope. It will keep, go- keep going. It may just be college before it gets where it needs to get. Um, but... Uh, just remember that, that sometimes it's brain development. Sometimes it's just um, they tell you what they want you to hear. But remember, this is what I want you to get out of this. We're for your, you and we're for your kids. That's why we're here. If you think that teachers are here because of the huge HC teacher salaries, you are sadly mistaken, okay? It is a calling. Our teachers want to be here because they care about kids. They truly do. And so if there's a way, if your student is struggling, talk to the teacher. Have your student talk to the teacher. Our teachers want our students to be successful. If your student is not succeeding, then that's, to me, that's where I'm somehow falling short and I'm not coming up with the way for them to be successful. And a lot of our teachers share that same point of view. And I hope when, when, when your kid um, ends up with a bump or a bruise or makes a bad decision, they end up in my office or Dean Vetus's office, know that we care about them and we want to develop character in them and that's why we're having the conversation that we're having we want them to have an understanding and we want them to grow and we want them to be ready to be on their own independent in college at the university level and we can't do that without some bumps and bruises so before you run into my office guns blazing remember that we're for you we're for your student okay and i think it's really helpful i think it's this is a message that needs to be present in our society We get a lot of cultural pressure to protect, but um, protecting isn't always the best way to love. Loving means sometimes calling calling out and speaking the truth. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that doesn't offend you, Um, but I do hope you you will hear my heart in that, that we are for you and for your students here. Um, I've already heard a couple of you talk about, you know, our our relationship between our teachers and our students. Um, And that's something that's huge about who we are as a school and is a huge part of who we are at Houston Christian. And that really links to the last thing I want to mention tonight, which is about extracurriculars. We are trying to create a culture here. Um, We're trying to create a culture in the classroom, but it's not just in the classroom. It's at lunch. It's how students treat each other. We're trying to extend that also to the arts, to the athletic field. Um, For example, something we're trying to, in terms of developing culture, something we're trying to do this year that we haven't done in the past is be more intentional. A lot of teams have a chaplain. We want to mentor those chaplains more intentionally. So we're going to be doing some things monthly to try to pull all the chaplains together, whether it's choir chaplain or football team chaplain or whoever. We're going to try to bring some of those chaplains together and mentor them to be more effective and let them have greater leadership opportunities. So we're trying to be very intentional about that. And there's some other ways that we're trying to expand and and cross, just really saturate our campus with a culture of helping kids Uh, make good decisions, pushing them to that. And when they don't make good decisions, helping them reflect on it, see that and be better from it. If you think teenagers are going to, we have 475, 480 teenagers here. If you think they're all going to make good decisions all the time, you have not worked with teenagers enough. I love them, not because they make good decisions all the time. I love them even though they don't always make good decisions all the time. But it's part of the learning process because they grow from it. So we're excited about what we're doing, but it's not just what's happening in the classroom. That's one aspect of it, but we're really working to be intentional um, across the campus. So um, I hope that helps. That's something you will see probably from some coaches, from some club sponsors, from different extracurricular leaders, um, trips that we take. Uh, Hopefully we can have some international trips and different trips going again. Um, So all those things are present and really important uh, to what we're doing here. So there we go. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. Um, so this is this is what we talked about. I think we covered everything on here. Um, any of these topics that you say, you know, Dr. Price, you didn't cover enough. I want to know more. Um, you're welcome to reach out to me. My email is dprice at houstonchristian.org. 
uh, you can reach out to Miss Swain. I'm happy to give you a call and talk with you further. I'll hang around tonight and be up here. If you want to talk about any of these things, I'm happy to speak with you. I really appreciate you. Of all the things you could do tonight, coming here tonight, um, I know you come here because you too care about your kids. Um, and I, I know our kids, one of the things I, I told our students on Monday, as I said, you need to realize what an honor it is to go to Houston Christian because there's a lot of students that don't have that opportunity. And I also said, I hope they did. I told them to go home and thank their parents for the opportunity to be here. Um, it truly is a blessing. Um, I'm thrilled to be able to work with your kids this year. I know a lot of you are new, and I'm excited to get to know them. Um, and, I, you know, we really do want to build a culture here where people belong and people want to be here. So thank you for being here, and I hope you as parents will also do that same, same thing as you get involved in our community. Thank you so much. Um, I'll hang around up front here. Please, if you don't know somebody in the room, please go introduce yourself. Make a few new friends before you leave tonight. Have a great night. Thanks for your time.